Okay, a uh, 35-year-old male, so I know Frozen was not geared at all towards me. So how does Disney ramp up the princessness? By not having this one, but two princesses. One, due to some unforeseen issues in her youth, is pretty much locked up in a room for the majority of her existence, therefore never truly learning how to control her ice powers. The other one entirely doesn't know that her sister has ice powers. And it's constantly about how come they don't hang out anymore. So she's like a bizarre social butterfly. So, if you're a fan of Big Bang Theory, think if, if uh, Amy Farrah Fowler had ice powers and Penny was her younger sister. So, Disney does this great jump like 20 years in like 10 minutes sort of sequence. <clears throat> and now it's time for them to have this massive ball, which then freaks out Elsa, the one with the ice powers, who then kind of perma-freezes her whole Nordic Empire. Um, yeah, so you have the cold-hearted sister, the, the goofy happy-go-lucky sister. And Disney continues its vein of, if you are rich, you're probably a villain. And if you're a rich, white, and male, you're definitely a villain. You pretty much meet, like, three male characters. Two come for money, one is poor. What if you figure out which one is the nice guy, which ones are the villains? Mm. This is a, it's a decent Disney princess-based movie. I have no idea why it became so uber popular, so the fact that it's got, you know, two princesses? Prin princess eyes? Yeah. There's lots of the standard, you know, exposition through song. Let It Go is the decent song. It works well. I'm okay with it. I never heard it on the radio because I don't listen to the radio. And I'm like, alright, not bad. Don't get precisely how it ties in directly to a woman with ice powers who had no training because they didn't take her to the Xavier school. This is Disney. They totally could have done that. She totally could have had like a bald dude in a wheelchair and be like, I will help you use your powers. Maybe for Frozen 2. Yeah. Or maybe since they own, well, not that many Marvel non-X-Men related characters would have the ability to wield ice. Well, Crystal, so they could maybe do a, a crossover with Frozen and uh, the Inhumans. Uh, that that kind of worked. I don't think they own the rights to Megan, the character from uh, Excalibur. But since this actually worked as a film, Warner Brothers, guess what? You can totally do a film about ice. The female princess with the white hair or blonde, depending on who's drawing her. Who tends to dress in blue and white and has ice powers. And has guy problems. Literally, she's dating a guy named Guy. Who's kind of a dick. It's totally right there. You can just take the idea of Frozen, put it in more like modern times, throw on a Guy Gardner green line. There you go. Because if it worked for Disney, it has to work for everybody else. You know, the women and female characters, since you really have two that are main ones, they don't really get beyond... They've got very, very few moments where they feel beyond stock. And I watch horror films. And these characters felt ridiculously stock. So, it, it's a decent Disney film. I'm still a fan of the classic ones. Because when you watch them, they had you know, a much smaller cast. People actually felt like they needed to do something. It is kind of hokey. It is kind of cheesy. But knowing that's not written for my gender nor my age range, I'm pretty sure other people probably absolutely completely and totally love this movie. For me, I was like, meh. When are we going to have, like, you know, another Incredibles movie or, like, Bolt 2? Or Black Cauldron 2? 